everyone. Welcome to the course of Microwave and Optical Communications. In today's class, we are going to learn about a topic called laser. Okay. So first, we need to know what is the abbreviation of laser. So, so laser is nothing but a light amplification by stimulated addition of radiation. Okay. So in initially, the first laser was built by uh, Theodore H. Mainman. Okay. Had Huge's research lab in 1960s. So it was generally based on the theoretical work by Charles Hart Towns and Leonard Scolo. Okay. So generally the lasers were uh, designed for so many applications like scientific, medical, uh, and commercial, and uh, also medial applications. Now coming to the properties of laser. So the line width of a light by laser is very, very narrow. Okay. So as we all see, you, we might have already seen the laser lights many times, right? So the light width, whatever the light, which is coming out of that particular laser is very, very narrow. Okay. And it also has a property called monochromaticity. That means it will be having a single frequency and single wavelength. Okay. So based on the applications or different types of uh, lasers, once the laser light is projected into the free air, it will be working or operating based on a single frequency as well as single wavelength. Okay. So third property is like it is coherence. So as we already discussed, it has same phase, frequency and wavelength. And the one of the important properties, it has high directivity and high intensity of beam. Okay. And the whatever the beam which is coming out of the laser and that particular stability of the beam is also very much excellent. So not only that, it has high quantum efficiency and it can also travel for very long distance. Okay. And also it will be having narrow spectral width. And as we have already discussed, right, the light is very, very narrow. So same thing narrow spectral width is considered and it has a very high modulation rate now let's see uh, the working of a laser how it is able to uh, get a high beam okay so how it is uh, having high directivity actually what's happening how the light is projected through a laser we are going to see now okay so in order to understand the operation of a laser or the stimulated absorption or the different properties first we need to consider the atom okay so in the center of this particular atom we have a charged protons so whatever you see over here the plus is a charged protons and the whole concept what you see in a circular shape consider it as an atom okay now usually what happens the electrons will be uh, there in this particular orbit and they try to stay in its own position. Okay. Now what happens? Let us see. See, suppose when a photon light or when some sort of photons falls on this particular atom. So what happens now is the electrons in the ground state has generally has, let us say one unit of energy and photon light has four units of energy. Okay. So after excitation of the electrons, it becomes five units. This is called stimulated absorption. Okay. So let me tell you once again, see, this is a kind of atom, which is surrounded by two energy states. And this is a proton in between. P and let us say this is the ground state level of electrons where the electrons are staying right now and this particular second layer state is called as excited state or higher energy level state let us say okay now let us say these electrons which is on the ground state level energy band is having only one unit of energy now when the photon light falls on this particular electrons, what happens is the electrons 
which is already having a one unit of energy will be gained by some four units of more energy because the protons or the photon light okay what uh, which is falling on this particular electron is already having four units of energy okay now what happened electron which is in the ground state is having one unit of energy and the photon light which is falling on this particular atom will be having four units of energy so what happens to the electron means once the four units of energy of the photon light whenever it is added to the one unit of energy of an electron which is of the ground state the electron from the ground state move to the excited state by adding some sort of energy now what happens photon light has got four units of energy and the electron has got one unit of energy now as the electron moves from ground state energy level to the excited state energy level the electron energy becomes how much five units right the energy units has added up so these five units it has gained some energy this concept is called as stimulated absorption okay so moving of electron from a ground state to the excited state in this particular atom whenever a photon light falls on it okay is considered as the stimulated absorption okay now let's see the next level now the electrons are in excited excited state okay see same concept is shown over here in a graphical form the electron which is present in the ground state due to the photon light addition it has gained some sort of units of energy and it has moved to the excited state over there okay now what happens when the electrons are there in the excited states okay and as the electrons are moved to the uh, excited state the concept we are considering it as stimulated absorption right now these electrons which are on the excited state or the higher energy band level is now will be uh, staying there for a few nanoseconds after that what happens is a very small amount of force is applied on the electrons which is in the excited state then what happens is the electrons from the excited state will become temporarily unstable okay and again fall back to the ground state now whenever the uh, electron was in excited state wh how much unit we have considered five units right because the photon light has got four units and the electron itself has got one unit five units right once the electron become unstable and from the excited state once it start falling to the ground state okay so it loses its additional energy so how much it has got uh, lost it an energy suppose let us say it has whenever the electron is in excited state it has got five units now whenever it is falling from excited state to the ground state again it loses one unit okay so whenever an electron which is unstable in the excited state falls back again to the ground state losing some sort of energy that energy will be in the form of photon so it releases the electron moving from excited state to the uh, ground state again it loses some sort of energy in the form of photon that photon is some sort of light so in the laser same concept is happening stimulated absorption by gaining the energy again when the electron becomes unstable in the higher excited state it again falls down to the ground state releasing some sort of energy this energy we are considering in the form of light that is the light which you observe in the laser okay this particular concept is called as spontaneous emission the falling of electron from the excited state to the ground state again due to the instability by releasing some sort of energy from it in the form of photon or light is nothing but the laser light what you see coming out of the laser unit okay that is nothing but called as spontaneous emission so in the whole operation of this particular laser light you need to consider two things one is stimulated absorption gaining energy by the electron uh, and 
spontaneous emission, losing some sort of an electron by the instability present in the excited state. Okay. So based on the losing of this particular energy, it will be transformed into a photon. That particular photon light is nothing but the laser light what you see. Same concept happens in the laser light also. And you can see the release of energy when the electron falling from higher excited state to the um, ground state in the form of laser light. This is what's